welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 saddest criminal minds episodes. Why is help me? He can't help you, he's weak. For this list, we're looking at BAU cases that continue to break our hearts. Since we'll be covering major plot points, a spoiler warning is now in effect. What do you think is the saddest episode? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Ashes and Dust. This season two episode begins with a family desperately trying to escape their house as it's burning. It's one of the show's best openings, but also one of the most visceral. Somebody! Somebody! Somebody please help us! Hotch and Prentice go to speak to Mrs. Cutler, the only survivor of the fire. Covered in serious burns, she's just minutes away from dying. Unfortunately, she has to relive the harrowing experience in order to help the BAU find the unsub. The woman's cries for help and pleas to see her family are agonizing. Hotch sits with her as she takes her last breaths, leaving him and the audience grieving the deaths of this innocent family. I can stay with you until you're ready, if you like. <sighs> I'd like that. Number 9. Lauren Emily Prentice joined the BAU back in season two, quickly becoming a fan favorite as well as a dear friend to the team. In this episode, we learn about her past undercover work with Interpol and her relationship with Ian Doyle. Do I plan the surprise, Titan? <sighs> now that Doyle has escaped a prison camp, he's out for revenge. After he attacks her, she's taken to the hospital as her life hangs on the line. Hotch tells the team that she died on the table, leaving everyone devastated. Spent. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Of course, we know she's not actually dead, and she later returns to the BAU. But seeing the team mourn her supposed death is still heartbreaking. This also marks Paget Brewster's temporary absence from the show. Number 8. Sex, Birth, Death High schooler Nathan Harris approaches Reed near the subway, saying he attended one of his talks about sadists. He's afraid of his own urges and dark thoughts, worried he'll actually hurt someone one day. Why'd you run away from me? Because, I don't know, I thought you'd say I was crazy and there's no way to stop it. The team has dealt with a few unsubs who want to understand their own psychology. But for Nathan, he needs to know before he acts on them. The team discovers that Nathan isn't the unsub killing sex workers around DC. However, it is recommended that he's hospitalized. In his heart, he doesn't want to hurt anyone. Positive sign, but intelligence and awareness don't always allow us to control our urges. Admitting a problem doesn't mean you can manage it. If I put him in a hospital, I'd be telling him that he's a monster. No, 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 no. He's just, he's just saying right now he's sick and he needs help. At the end, the teenager attempts to take his own life, feeling that this is the only way to save others he may harm in the future. The late Anton Yelchin gives an unforgettable performance as a young man in fear of himself. You don't want to do this. I have to. Number 7. Hope Near the seventh anniversary of her daughter's disappearance, Monica, a member of Garcia's victim support group, goes missing. Bill, another member of the group, reveals that he is the one who abducted Hope. I bet since she got that letter, he read it a hundred times. How do you know about the letter? He promises to take Monica to her. Desperate to see her daughter again, she agrees to go with him. Later, he admits that he joined the support group after Hope took her own life in captivity. As if what he'd done wasn't twisted enough, Bill lures Monica with plans to create another Hope. All those things that you miss out on with Hope, you'll get to experience with this new baby that we're going to create. While at Bill's house, she's faced with Hope's life as a prisoner and eventually finds her body. Seeing a mother mentally tortured by her daughter's captor is sickening to watch. Like an animal. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't understand what happened. My child. Number six, seven seconds. This intense episode begins with a frantic search for six year old Katie Jacobs, who disappeared while at the mall with her family. Her parents are obviously distraught, but there's something off about her aunt and uncle. The team searches the Jacobs' home and finds evidence that Katie has been hiding a terrible secret. Wait, I know these signs. 
Acting out on her toys, wetting the bed, she's obviously covering up something about that necklace. When she's found, medics have to revive her as the parents watch. Katie's dad finds out his twin brother harmed his daughter and that his sister-in-law almost killed her out of jealousy. Instead of shielding her from more pain, <laughs> you blamed her for your own. No, no, no. I... Yes, you did. You have robbed Katie of her childhood. Are you going to steal the rest of her life from her as well? No, enough! <laughs> Both Susan and Richard are arrested, leaving their son Jeremy without parents. By the end, an entire family is destroyed. Susan consoling Katie's mother, it's an image that's gonna haunt me for a while. Number five, Zug Zwang. Many fans have a soft spot for Spencer Reed. So when he began a romantic relationship with Maeve, we wanted all the happiness in the world for him. Because of Maeve's stalker, the two only spoke covertly over the phone. And yes, this is how it has to be, for today at least. Okay, well, I guess I'll talk to you next Sunday. Bye. Bye. Love you. But despite the distance between each other, their bond was strong. Sadly, the couple never actually did meet face to face until they're at the mercy of Maeve stalker Diane. I don't love you. Sorry. I understand. Reed does all he can to save her, but Diane shoots herself along with Maeve right in front of him. This scars Reed and us forever. Who's Thomas Merton? He knows. Number four, profiler profiled. Derek always appears tough and somewhat guarded, but when he's accused of murdering young boys in his hometown of Chicago, he's forced to open up to his team. When Derek was just a kid, his father, a cop, was killed while on duty. Growing up without a dad was difficult, but Carl Buford, a youth center director and football coach, stepped in to supposedly help out. To others, it looked like he did, but behind closed doors, Buford abused him. Now, Derek learns he's done the same with other boys in the neighborhood. He did him to me, too. You do whatever you think you gotta do to keep him happy because he's the closest thing to a father you got. But what he's doing to you is wrong. He confronts Buford in a powerful, vulnerable scene, leading to his arrest. Actually, I'm saying you have everything to do with making me who I am. Because of you, I'm somebody who gets to spend the rest of his life making sure guys like you go down. Number three, Revelations. From witnessing the death of his girlfriend to being framed and imprisoned for murder in Mexico, Spencer Reed has gone through hell. This will be over quickly if you just confess your sins. What a sinner. His first traumatic experience as a member of the BAU comes in season two, when he's captured by an unsub with a dissociative identity disorder. Tobias Hankel's two other personalities, Charles, his deceased father, and Raphael, an angel, torture Reed for his sins. I'm not a devil. I'm not a devil. I'm a man. My name is Spencer Reed, and I have a mother, and I have a father just like you, and they taught me the Bible. Let, let, me, just, let me just recite the Bible. Time to confess, Spencer Reed. Tobias himself empathizes with Reed, giving him Dilaudid to help with the pain. This causes Reed's addiction to the drug long after he's rescued by his team. Seeing him suffer physically, mentally, and emotionally for an entire episode is excruciating. <laughs> oh my god, he's killing him. Number two, Mosley Lane. What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? It's not fair. Let her go. For almost a decade, Roger and Anita Roycewood performed abductions from public places, including Charlie Hillridge. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. I'm not a stranger. I'm your brother. Why did you bring me here? As a teen, Charlie is now forced to aid in the capture of others. However, he does what he can to help his brothers and sisters. Do what they say, okay? It'll make it easier. Stay. When a girl disappears from a festival, the team thinks it could be connected to Charlie's case. Parents gather at the BAU office while the team searches for the unsubs. Some are found, while others have been cremated in the Roycewood's incinerator. Between the distraught parents and the terrified kidnapped victims, this is undoubtedly one of the show's most tragic episodes. He died protecting that little girl. <laughs> he was alive yesterday. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. The Caller. 
When a son is murdered, the killer taunts his parents with creepy phone calls. See what I did? Did you see it? What the hell did you do to her? Did you kill Lita? Did you? The tall man. JJ learns what led to her sister's death. Rosalind probably wasn't your first victim. But Bethany, she will be your last. Luke. Luke's best friend is killed. I'm on duty. Supervisory, special agent Luke Calvis. The FBI's behavioral analysis unit. Bad is in my right back pocket. Lucky and Penelope. Two episode arc where Garcia is shot after a date. Do you have any idea why he would have done this? Did he threaten you? Did he, did he want something? I just thought he liked me. And in the end, a tearful series finale. Can we please promise that no matter where we go after this, that we keep this feeling in our hearts. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 100 Arguably the worst unsub the BAU has ever faced is George Foyette, a.k.a. The Reaper. Are you scared? <laughs> you should be. The serial killer returns after over a decade, when his contract with the Boston detective on his case expires. This was also one of Hotch's first cases in the BAU. After he's caught, he's sent to jail, which he quickly escapes. Fearing for their safety, Hotch puts his ex-wife Haley and his son Jack into witness protection. But in the show's 100th episode, Foyette tracks them down. Hotch is on the phone with Haley when she realizes Foyette is going to kill her. I know you didn't sign on for this. Neither did you. I'm sorry for everything. Promise me that you will tell him how we met. Hotch and the whole team listen as Foyette shoots Haley. Seeing Hotch hold Haley's lifeless body is one of, if not the most heart-wrenching scene in the entire show. Get out of here. Go see if they need help downstairs. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.